We are so excited to walk into the year 2021 with you, and we are in continuous prayer with you and your family. Today, we started 21 days of prayer and fasting. Be sure to visit our website at beatmetothestar.net for additional information and details about the fast. We also have an update regarding our Follow the Star broadcast. Starting January 18th, we'll be moving from CW21 at 6 a.m to my 68 at 6 30 a.m central standard time we also have some exciting news our small groups will be starting back up again this month so be on the lookout for more details and information and also to stay in the loop text the word star to 94253 for details information and inspirational messages from pastor beavers if you've been rocking with us and you're ready to make a commitment to team star text the word decision to 94253 are you ready to get closer to God? Prayer connects us to God and fasting disconnects us from the world. Join us for 21 days of prayer and fasting, Sunday, January 3rd through Saturday, January 22nd. Pray with us daily at 6.30 a.m. Central on Facebook at Pastor Beavers or dial 712-775-7031 and enter code 520 068-905 pound. For tips on fasting, visit www.beatmetothestar.net. Let's grow towards God together. You know Dr. John Adolph. He's been to the star several times and you love his preaching. We've partnered with him and the Antioch Church in Beaumont, Texas for the Inheritance Conference 2021. I asked him why he started the Inheritance Conference and he said in his own words, I noticed a drop off in Sunday school attendance all around the country. And rather than beat people over the head to get them in Sunday school, I wanted to find a creative way to still disciple God's people by teaching them one book or one theme of the Bible at the beginning of every year. Register today for Inheritance 2021, January the 3rd through January the 8th. Start your year with a bang. He's brought the best of the best from all over the country. It's getting ready to go down. Register at the link that you see right here. Hey, what's up, everybody? It is Communion Sunday. It is the first Sunday of the year, and normally... We do this on the back end after my message, but today the Holy Spirit led me to do it on the front end. I don't want you to play follow the leader, but wherever you are, grab your communion elements. Wherever you are, I need you to grab your communion elements. The root word of communion is union. It is where we get our English word unity from. Every time we partake in the Lord's Supper, we literally say, Lord, we are one with you, and Lord, we are one with each other. 
How can we love God whom we've never seen and hate our brother or our sister that we see every day? In other words, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 11, he says that whoever eats or drinks unworthily eats and drinks damnation to their own souls. What does that mean? Whenever I partake in the Lord's Supper, perpetrating as if I'm one with God and one with my neighbor, when in actuality I have a beef with my neighbor, that means that I'm taking the Lord's Supper in vain. It does me more harm than good. But it also means when Jesus says, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Whenever I partake of the Lord's Supper, but my mind is not focused and stayed on Jesus the Christ, then I take the Lord's Supper in vain, and it does me no good. The bread represents his body that was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we healed the wine. The wine represents his blood that was shed for the remission of sin. Go ahead and pull back that first layer. The same night that Jesus was in the upper room with his disciples, he took bread, he blessed it and broke it, gave it to his disciples. He said, take, eat. This is my body. Likewise, he took the cup, the unfermented fruit of the vine. He said, take, drink. This is my blood. And when they were finished, they marched out in the spirit of unity, peace, fellowship, and oneness. And guess what, family? It's time for worship. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, can you clap your hands with us this morning? All the praise and all the glory belongs to our God. So we send it to him this morning. Hallelujah. Here we go. I will sing praises unto my king. Yeah. I will sing praises unto my king.
nobody like him? Hallelujah. Can you just open up your mouth and just say, Lord, there's nobody like you. I can search the world all over and see a find Nobody that can do me like you can do me. Nobody can save like you can. Nobody can heal like you can. Nobody can turn situations around just in the nick of time like our God. Somebody ought to praise him for being a faithful God. You ought to just open up your mouth and praise him for being a capable God. You ought to open up your mouth and praise him for being a consistent God. Somebody praise God for his consistency. There's nobody like you. There's nobody like you. There's nobody, nobody like him. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. There's nobody like our God. There's nobody like him. So we lift our hands and worship the great I am. We give glory to the great I am for he is the lamb. The lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. We honor the lamb. Hallelujah. the one that was slain to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. That's it. Come on, say glory to the Lamb. And here is why. For he is and omega forever Forever is he, and he will reign forever. Holy, 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 holy is he. Now come on, let's raise it up. Say glory to the Lamb. We give glory to the Lamb. He is the slain lamb. Come on, somebody give glory to the lamb, to the lamb. Come on, say four. He is the beginning and he is the end forever. Come on, sing it like you mean it. Sing glory to the Lamb. We give all praise and glory to the Lamb. To the one that sits on the throne and to the Lamb we sing. to come we sing glory to the Lamb yeah glory to the Lamb he is holy he is sovereign 
one who is and is to come, the one who died, the one who was slain from the foundations of the world, we give glory to the Lamb of God. He is the Lamb of God. He is the Lamb of God. He is the Savior of the world. Somebody give him glory. Somebody give him glory. Somebody give him honor. He's deserving. He's deserving. sing hallelujah to the Lamb, hallelujah to the Lamb, hallelujah to the Lamb, glory to the Lamb. In spite of a health pandemic, an economic pandemic, a race Justice! pandemic, and a political Results pandemic, this is everything that we did at the star in 2020. Ready? Set. We started the year in church with a bang. COVID-19 hit. We shut our doors, but we never shut the church. Our first priority was to take care of the people. The food lines in Lincoln, Alabama, and Birmingham, Alabama kept growing and growing. And we kept giving and giving because you kept giving and giving. From food to furniture, to renovating houses, to banks at Christmas, just to name a few, we were there for the community. But in spite of all of our giving, we still took some big hits. Our pastor emeritus, Dr. Tommy Chappelle, who served faithfully for 35 years as pastor and faithfully for 10 years as pastor emeritus, went home to be with the Lord. And then after that, we took another hit. And he's gonna come up short. Oh! Our first lady emeritus, Loretta Chappelle, who served our church faithfully for 35 years as first lady and 10 years as first lady emeritus, went to be with the Lord. And as if that wasn't enough, we then took another hit. Clock is brought to you by Modell. Oh! 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 Deacon Mims McCarroll, a legend in our city, who was the head deacon when I first came to the church, went to be with the Lord. But in spite of all of the hits, we never tapped out. We had major renovation going on at the Star in 2020. From the inside of our Early Childhood Development Center, to the outside of our Early Childhood Development Center, to the paving of parking lots, to the putting on of brand new rooftops and brand new air conditions on the outside of the building, to brand new sound and video wall on the inside of the building, we got it done to prepare for your return in 2021. So in closing, I wanna say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Team Star. 2021, here we come. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. We are live and in living color. It is the first Sunday of the year. I'm pumped and I am excited for what God has done in 2020. And if you can hear my voice, if you can see my face, he's kept you all through 2020 and you made it to the beginning of 2021. We are live at Star Cafe. I have not seen our church in physical shape, form, or fashion since Sunday, March the 15th of 2020. Can you believe it's already been almost nine months since we have convened together? We will reconvene 
sometime in 2021. I'd be remiss if I didn't say thank you for how it is that you have been faithful in honoring the Lord through the giving of your time that you're offering. Salvation is free, but it costs to do ministry. I'm going to say that again. Salvation is free but it calls to do ministry. Those of you who want to give in person Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., we're open Sunday. Today is Sunday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We are open if you want to give in person, but those hours don't fit. We have a drop box that is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Come up the church steps, go to the left, go to the brick part of the building, look to the right, you will see the drop box. You can mail in your cash, your checks, your money orders to 7400 London Avenue, South Birmingham, Alabama, zip code. 35206. Give online www.beatmetothestar.net forward slash give. Or you can give by text. Text the amount that God has laid upon your heart to 855 912 7781. I started a series on New Year's Eve entitled Anchor. The word that the Lord gave me for the beginning of 2021 is stay connected. So many things that can disconnect us from God. But I'm doing all that I can to make sure that the people of God are taught to stay anchored. I want you to open your Bibles to John chapter number 15. John chapter number 15. I'm reading verses 3 and 4. John chapter number 15, verse number 3 and verse number 4. I would say when you got it, say I got it, but I'm not able to hear you. You're just able to hear me. John chapter number 15, verse number 3. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can you bear fruit, except you abide in me. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. Anchor part number two camera number four i'm coming your way i need you to type that in the comment section anchored part number two camera number four didn't get it camera number three i'm coming your way type it in the comment section i need you to call somebody text some facebook and uh, facebook them and tweet them take a screenshot let everybody know that we are live and in a living color type this anchor part number two Beloved, I've had the awesome privilege to be married to the lovely Candace Beavers over the past 15 years of my life. Together we have eight children, three grandchildren. What amazes me is not that we have eight children, three grandchildren, but our youngest two girls are Tori and Kai. Tori is four years old. Kai is two years old. Not only do they happen to be our youngest two girls, but I want you to understand they are, in fact, our youngest two children. Just the other day, Tori and Kai came to me, and they said to me, Daddy, will you take me a bath? I became absolutely elated because I remember when it was that I was a young child, I hated taking baths. They said to me, Daddy, will you take me a bath? Number one, they recognized that they were dirty. Number two, they recognized that they needed to be clean. Number three, they wanted to be clean. And number four, they did not try to clean themselves. They came to their father because they recognized their father was the only somebody who was able to make them clean. And as we had this conversation and as we started to converse, it reminded me, ladies and gentlemen, of the difference between religion and relationship. What do you mean, Dr. Beavers? Religion says, I'm dirty. Please don't tell my father. Relationship says, I'm dirty. I need to call my father. Did you hear what I just said? I'm going to say it again. Religion says, I'm dirty. Please don't tell my father. Why is it you don't want to tell your father that you were dirty? I don't want to tell my father I'm dirty because I believe that my father is going to be upset with me, angry with me, and my father is going to take his frustration out of me. That's for those of us who are stuck in religion. Religion says, I'm dirty. Please don't tell my father. But relationship says, I'm dirty. 
I need to call my father at the beginning of 21 of 2021. I want to pause for the purpose of speaking to those of us who are tuned in at this particular moment in time. I want to ask you this question. Are you stuck in religion or do you have a genuine relationship with God? Both religion and relationship recognize their dirt. Many of you are looking at me crazy as if you don't have any dirt. Many of you are looking at me strange as if you don't have any dirt. Many of you are looking at me stupid as if to say you always cross every T and you always dot every I. But for the rest of us that are tuned in under the sound of my voice, you can attest to the reality that I haven't always said the right things. I haven't always done the right things. I've gone some places that I should not have gone. I've touched some things that I should not have touched. And even if I didn't go there and even if I didn't touch it, I show no thought about it. There's a whole lot of psychological centers in the body of Christ. Christ. And I want to ask you this question. Are you stuck in religion or do you have relationship? Both religion and relationship recognize their dirt. They recognize, according to Romans chapter number three, verse 23, that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. They recognize, according to first John chapter number one, verse eight, that if you say that you have no sin, you deceive yourself and the truth is not inside of you. But the difference between those of us that are stuck in religion and those of us that are stuck in relationship, religion says I'm dirty. Please don't tell my heavenly father. Relationship says I'm dirty. I need to call my heavenly father. This is for everybody who's made up inside of their mind at the beginning of 2021. I need to get myself together. I'm going to get myself together and then I'm going to come to the church. If you could get yourself together, you wouldn't need God and you wouldn't need the church in the first place. You got to make up inside of your mind that I don't have what it takes to get myself together. I don't have what it takes to clean myself up. And because I don't have what it takes to get myself together and clean myself up, I may as well move from religion into relationship because religion says I'm dirty. Don't tell my heavenly father. Relationship says I'm dirty. I need to call him up. That's what the old people used to say. You can call them up and you can tell them exactly what it is that you want. As we tiptoe into the corridors of our text, I'm in John chapter number 15. Jesus the Christ, son of the living God, is speaking to his disciples. What is a disciple? A disciple is, in fact, a learner and a follower of Jesus Christ. A disciple is not just somebody who goes to church. Going to church doesn't make you a disciple no more than sitting in a garage makes you a car. But a disciple is a learner and a follower of Jesus Christ. It's what it is that we call the Last Supper. It is what it is that we call the Lord's Supper. And after he says to them in John chapter number 14, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there were many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'm coming again to receive you unto myself. After after Jesus says, I'm getting ready to go away in John chapter number 14. He then says in John chapter number 15, I am the true vine. Hold up. Wait a minute. Stop it. You already learned, ladies and gentlemen, on New Year's Eve that vines produce grapes. Grapes produce wine. Wine is symbolic of joy. Notice that Jesus did not just say, I am the vine. He says that I am the true vine. What Jesus is really saying is that I am your only source for true joy. The problem with many of us is not that we want joy. The problem with many of us, you've been searching for joy in all of the wrong places. You think that you can find it in a woman. You think that you can find it in a man. You think that you can find it in a relationship. You think that you can find it on the job. You think that you can find it in a house. You think that you can find it in a car. But is there anybody who's tuned in at this particular moment in time who can attest to the reality I searched all over? And I still couldn't find nobody. I searched high and low, and I still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater than Jesus the Christ. That's new school. Let me go grandmama them for a second. The grandmama them said it like this. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. That can't nobody do me like the Lord. After he says, I am the true vine, my father is the husband man. In verse number 3, John chapter number 15, put it up on the screen so everybody can see it. He says to his disciples, now 
Are you clean through the word which I have spoken unto you? I'm going to say it again because somebody just missed it. He says, now are you clean through the word which I have spoken unto you? He's talking to his disciples. But come a little bit closer, ladies and gentlemen. He's not just talking to his disciples due to the fact that he's getting ready to check out of this world in physical shape, form, and fashion. He's also talking to the future leaders of the New Testament early church. The man is getting ready to die, but the ministry is getting ready to move on because Jesus' ministry is not a personality-driven ministry. So in other words, the people that he's talking to that are surrounding him at the table, these are the people that he's getting ready to use. But the reason he's talking about cleansing, because what Jesus is saying to his disciples, I'm going to use you, but I'm going to cleanse you first. It reminds me of the Old Testament eagle-eyed prophet by the name of Isaiah. You remember Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter number 6, we see the call of Isaiah. God, in his infinite wisdom, speaks to Isaiah and says, Isaiah, I'm getting ready to use you. Isaiah looks at himself and says, Lord, you can't use me. God says, why can I not use you? And that's how many of us say to God, you can't use me. And God is asking why. Isaiah says, woe is me. He says, for I am undone, and I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell amongst a people of unclean lips. As a consequence, God says, I already factored in all of your uncleanliness before I called you to be able to use you. He says, send for the angel. The angel comes, and when the angel comes, he takes a hot coal off of the live altar, and when he gets the live coal, he puts it on Isaiah's mouth, and he cleanses his mouth, and he cleanses Isaiah before he uses Isaiah. And that's what's going on in John chapter number 15. He wouldn't tell the disciples you are clean through the word if they weren't already dirty and they didn't need to be clean in the first place. Notice who's at the table. Judas is at the table. He's about to betray Jesus. Peter is at the table. In spite of Peter being used on the day of Pentecost, he's not qualified to preach at Pentecost because he's cussing people out in Matthew 26. He's not qualified to preach in Acts chapter number 2 because he has anger management issues in John chapter number 8. 18 verse 10 when he cuts the ear off to the servant of the high priest he's not qualified to preach in Acts chapter number 2 because he has coward tendencies in Matthew 26 but the fact that Jesus says you are clean the future New Testament leaders to the New Testament early church the fact that Jesus says you are now clean through the word says to all of us and I hope you don't tear the living room up the job up wherever you are watching from it says to all of us God does not call the clean but God cleanses the ones that he calls. Come a little bit closer. I'm going to say it again. Camera number four, I'm coming your way. God does not call the cleanse, but he cleanses those whom he calls. I want to tell somebody who thinks that God can't use you in 2021 because of your mistakes, because of your past. I want to tell somebody God didn't call you because you were clean, but please believe that he's going to cleanse you because he called you in the first place. What amazes me is not that God cleanses who he calls, but if you look in that same passage of scripture, John chapter number 15, beginning with verse number three, Jesus says, now are you clean? Here it is through the word which I have spoken unto you. How does God cleanse us? He cleanses us through the word. I want to ask you that question again. How does God cleanse us? Camera number three, he cleanses us through the word. So here's the reason many of us, many of us are saved, but many of us never get cleansed. We are saved, but we never get cleansed because we love to shout, but we hate to study. Any Christian who loves to shout but does not put equal amount of time in studying the word of God is the equivalent of me when I was three years old. I wanted to be clean. I just hated taking baths. You're going to get it in just a minute. I'm going to say it again. Any Christian who loves to shout but hates to study is the equivalent of me when I was three years old. I wanted to be clean. I just hated taking a bath. Camera number three, I'm coming your way. I'm going to say it again. Any Christian that loves to shout, any Christian that loves to shout but hates to study because they hate reading the word of God is the equivalent of me when it was that I was three years old. I wanted to be clean, but I just hate 
taking a bath. And that's the purpose of this anchored message. I want to stir your spirit, not just to usher you into the presence of God for praise and worship, but I want to stir your spirit to reignite your hunger for the word of God. Is there anybody who's tuned in at this particular moment in time who can attest to the reality that the only reason I did not lose my mind in the midst of this COVID-19 health pandemic, it was because of the word of God. The only reason I did not go crazy in the middle of this COVID-19 economic pandemic, it was because of the word of God. I know you sitting at home, but I dare you to get your Bible. I dare you to get your iPhone. I dare you to get your Android. I dare you to sit it on the floor. I dare you to stand up. If you paper Bible save, I dare you to stand on top of your Bible. If you got a phone or an app or a device, I dare you to just hover your foot over your Bible. You could attest to the reality after everything that I've gone through, I should have been crazy. I should have been postal. But the only reason I still got my right mind is because of the word of God. What amazes me is not that Jesus says, I'm going to clean you before I use you. But what amazes me is how he cleanses us. He says there's no cleansing outside of the word of God. But in order for us to be cleansed, we've got to be anchored. Three things that I'm getting ready to raise up. I need you to type that in the comment section. In order for us to be cleansed, we've got to be anchored. This particular passage, John chapter number 15, verses 3 through 4, teaches us three things that warrant all of our attention about being anchored. And I'm getting ready to raise up. Number one, when you are anchored in Christ, it requires us to stay connected, not just get connected. I'm going to say it again. I need you to write that down. When you are anchored in Christ or being anchored in Christ requires us to stay connected, not just get connected. Dr. Beavers, how do you know that to be true? I need you to make that make sense. John chapter number 15, verse number 4, after Jesus says, now are you cleansed through the word which I have spoken unto you? He then says, now that I've cleansed you, stay connected. He says, John chapter number 15, verse number 4, abide in me. That word abide literally means to remain in me. The problem with many of us is not that we don't get connected. The problem with many of us is that we don't stay connected. Isn't it amazing? At the beginning of 2020, many of us got connected to God. Isn't it amazing? At the beginning of 2021, many of us are reconnecting with God in the middle of 21 days of prayer and fasting all at the same time. The problem with many of us is not that we don't get connected, but as the currents of life begin to blow us in different directions, many of us allow the external currents of life to cause us not to stay connected. And God is saying, whatever you do in 2021, if you are going to be anchored, he says, I don't just need you to get connected. I need you to stay connected. I don't just need you to start the Bible reading plan at the beginning of the year. I need you to finish by the end of the year. I don't just need you to start with 21 days of prayer and 21 days of fasting, but day 22 and beyond, I need you to form a habit. That's all the 21 days was about in the first place. I need you to stay connected. I don't just need you to treat prayer as an event. I need you to treat it as a lifestyle. I don't just need you to treat my relationship with you as an event. I need you to treat it as a lifestyle. But the only way that it's getting ready to be a lifestyle, God says that when you're anchored in Christ, you can't just get connected. You got to stay connected. That's the first thing that we learn in the text. Here's the second thing that we learn in the text. Not only does being anchored in Christ require us to stay connected, but number two, being anchored in Christ requires Jesus to be at the center of my life not just in my life. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again because you just missed it. Camera number four, being anchored in Christ requires Jesus to be at the center of my life, not just in my life. Camera number three, I want to talk to you. I want to tell you this right here. God does not just want to be in your life. God wants to be the center of your life. God doesn't just want to be in my life. He wants to be the center. God does not just want to be in our lives. God wants to be the center. And the tragedy with many of us as Christians is not that God is not in our lives. The tragedy with many of us as Christians is that God is no longer the center. 
Where do you find that in the text? John chapter number 15, verse number 4. Jesus not only said, abide in me, but after he said, abide in me, he says, when you abide in me, I will abide in you. There's an intertwining going on. A threefold cord cannot be easily broken. He says, when you remain in me, I'm going to remain in you. And when I remain in you, I don't come to take sides. I come to take over. I'm not going to remain in a place where I'm not wanted. I'm not going to remain in a place where I'm not welcome. I'm not going to remain in a place where I'm tolerated, but I'm not embraced. He says, but the only way I'm going to remain in you is when it is that you fully embrace me. And the way that I know that you have fully embraced me is when it is that I'm not just in your life, he says, I want to be the center of your life. I want to ask you this question at the beginning of 2021. Is your job the center of your life? I want to ask you this question at the beginning of 2021. Is your house the center of your life? I want to ask you this question at the beginning of 2021. Is your car the center of your life? I want to ask you this question at the beginning of 2021. Is your relationship the center of your life? life. Isn't it amazing that many of us put so much into things that have no power? They're good to us, but they're not our source. They're just our resources. And the very thing that we put all of the energy into or the very person or sons that we put all of our energy into, sometimes God allows these things to let us down in order to bring us back to him. Because God is saying, this is the year where you got to be anchored. This is the year. This is the year where you're not just going to be connected at the beginning of the year. This is the year where you're going to stay connected. The only way for you to stay connected is that you've got to be anchored. And when you are anchored, Christ says, I'm the number one and the top priority of your life. I'm not just in your life. I am the center of your life. Have we pushed him to the edge with all of our busyness? Have we pushed him to the edge when our mind is not stayed on him? Have we pushed him to the edge because we are involving ourselves in things that have no eternal value? Have we pushed him to the edge when God's saying, I want you to be anchored, but in order for you to be anchored, I don't just need to be in your life. I want to be the center. The last thing I want you to understand is that when you are anchored, Christ promises then I'm going to make you faithful and fruitful all at the same time. I'm going to say it again. When you are anchored, Christ promises that I'm going to make you faithful and fruitful all at the same time. He says in John chapter number 15, verse 4, abide in me. Don't just get connected, stay connected, remain in me, and I will abide in you. I don't just want to be in your life, I want to be the center of your life. He says, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. Who is the vine? Jesus the Christ. No more can you bear fruit except you abide, remain, you are anchored in me. Christ doesn't just want us to be anchored for I can be. He says, I want you to be anchored because I'm giving you the power, the power to produce. Your dreams are not going to lie dormant in 2021. The book, the LLC, the 501C3, the idea is not going to lie dorm dormant in 2021. But even more important than that, says, I'm calling you to produce fruit. The fruit of the Spirit found in Galatians 5, 22 through 23, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, kindness, and self-control. But not just the fruit of the Spirit. I'm calling you to produce fruit so much to the point that you are a disciple that makes other disciples. Many of us are disciples, but I'm going to ask you this question. Have you made any other disciples? What a tragedy. What a tragedy to get to the pearly gates the final day of judgment and see him face to face and have to say to God, I didn't lead one person to Christ inside of my life. He says the only way you can have the power to do it is that you stay anchored. I want to be anchored not just to go to heaven. 
I want to be anchored because life is so crazy. I need him to survive and thrive on earth. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the power of your word. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that our hearts would be stirred, not just to get connected, but to stay connected. To stay connected, regardless of what 2021 brings, let us stay connected, God. 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 Through whatever losses we face, let us stay connected. If there's anybody who's not connected, come on, take your cell phone out right now. Text the word decision to 94253. Text the word decision to 94253. Within 48 hours, our team is going to contact you. If you want a relationship with God, if you want to rededicate your relationship to God, if you want to be water baptized, if God has told you at the beginning of this year, I'm your pastor, this is your church, text decision to 94253 and pray this prayer. Jesus, thank you for dying for my sins. Thank you for allowing yourself to be buried. Thank you for getting up on the third day with all power in your hands. Come into my heart make you the Lord of my life. If I'm saved but I've strayed away, I renew my commitment to you. If I'm saved but I don't have a church, beat me to the start. Start this year off right. Text decision at 94253. I have decided to follow you, Jesus, all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Come on and give God electronic praise with your hearts, with your likes, with your comments, with your chairs. For everybody who made that decision to God be all the glory in closing. I'd be remiss if I didn't say thank you for how it is that you have been faithful in honoring the Lord through the giving of your tithe and your offering. Salvation is free, but it costs to do ministry because of your generous gifts. We are paving parking lots, renovating our early childhood development center, anticipating the opening. There's a lot going on at the start to prepare for your return this year, 2021. Listen, if you want to give in person 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. today, we're open. Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. we're open. If you want to give in person but those hours don't fit, we have a drop box open 24 hours a day. Come up the church steps, go to the left, go to the brick part of the building, look to the right. You will see the drop box mailing your cash, your checks, your money orders. The 7400 London Avenue, South Birmingham, Alabama, 35206. Give online, www.beatmetothestar.net forward slash give. Give by text. Text the amount that God has laid upon your heart to 855-912-7781. Cash app, dollar sign, beat me to the star. Venmo at beat me to the star. Lord, take us from this place, but never from your presence. Bless the gifts and the givers. May they be used for the edification and the upbuilding of your kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. Now unto him that's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be their glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. And everyone that agreed with this prayer, shout amen, amen. And amen. God bless you.